Hi, this is Ro. Welcome to Class 2 for Bookbinding Mondays. And today we are going to do pamphlets. We are going to learn how to do this beautiful butterfly pamphlet and this wildlife pamphlet. So come on in and let's get started. What I want to go over with you is some basic supplies. We're going to go over our threads, our awls, our needles, and our rulers. So let's look at their threads. You don't need to get anything fancy for your for your pamphlets. What you have at home will do. Um, here are some basic all-purpose thread. Um, if you do use all-purpose threads or anything that you have at home, I do suggest that you have um, some sort of beeswax or anything like that for your thread is because it'll prevent the thread from tangling while you're sewing. It's really important. If you have any embroidery thread, um, you could use this. Uh, to see this thread will separate into four strands. You'll need one strand of the thread as you're sewing and you'll probably have to connect them together um, as you go along. So this is one strand. The next thing that we have here is an Irish thread. Irish linen thread and it's it's lightly waxed so it's not a full wax Irish thread you could get this in various colors or you can get this in simple white like we have it right here this is a normal white Irish linen thread um, I usually use the colored Irish threads when I have exposed bindings so a white bite a white thread will do this is a fully waxed thread this is usually used for your exposed, like your Coptic bindings or other types of bindings like that. Um, it is pretty thick. Um, it's not necessary for this binding, but if you want to use it, you can. And we'll explain what type of needle to use with this one. If you don't have those on hand, this is called the tatting thread. And this right here is a non-waxed Irish linen thread that I will be using. It's a book binder's thread as well. And I'll be using this with my wax. I'll go ahead and wax some of my thread before we use it. And we'll put this over here. Another thing that you'll need is an awl. This is to poke holes um, in your signatures. There's a variety of awls that you can use. If you don't have an awl, you can make your own. I did this with a, a wine cork and a needle. It's a little bit crooked, but you go ahead and you would take a sewing needle and you would put it on the eye side down and you would poke it straight through. Um, I would use a thimble to go ahead and poke it straight through and then you would have your own awl. Okay, then comes your needles. Um, you can use a book binding needle the book binding needles are usually a bit, a little bit longer and thicker, and they have a wider eye. Um, they do come in a variety of sizes, or you can use a normal sewing needle. This is a darning needle, and um, as you see here, this is a normal sewing needle that you can use. If you do use a sewing needle, you can't, you don't really want to use a wax needle with a sewing needle. It'll gum up the eye and you'll have a really hard time getting the wax thread through the eye of the needle. You'll need a larger needle um, with a larger eye. But then you also want to be careful that you don't want to get too large of a needle because it may be too big for your, um, for the project that we're doing today. Let me show you. Um, let me see, because you might get a too large of a needle with a too large of an eye. This one's really thick, and we don't need this thick of a needle for this project today. So you want to be careful on that. Other materials that you'll need is a ruler. Um, you'll, I have one with the metric side and the imperial side here. I have also my quilters ruler. I like this ruler because I can see through it and I'll be able to do easy measurements. Another ruler that's really handy are rulers. I like this because it protects your hands when you're using sharp instruments. You can put your hand here, put pressure, and that way if you do have slippage on your when you're using your exacto knives or box cutters, you have protection on your hands. It also has a little bit of a sharp edge so you can actually rip your paper. This is also one of my absolute favorite rulers. Um, 
that I have as a straight edge. I mostly use it as a straight edge because it's really heavy duty and it has a lot of weight to it. So I can put a lot of pressure on here and then I can go ahead and either, I don't really rip with it, but I can use my sharp edges and, um, and put a lot of pressure on here. And I also store my stuff when I'm not using it here. Okay. I'll put these over here. You'll need a pencil, a bone folder. Um, if you don't have a bone folder, you can use a popsicle stick, a spatula, any type of straight edge to fold your papers um, for this project. You'll need some sort of sharp edge, an X-Acto knife, or a box cutter for later on. And then you'll need various types of papers. So the paper that we're gonna be using today, I have a colored, a colored all-purpose copy paper and I also have another um, all-colored, uh, all-purpose copy paper here. Um, this was, uh, I think this was 11 by 17 and I cut it down. Or you can just use your standard copy paper. We're also using um, decorative paper that you can get at your local craft store. So with our first pamphlet, we are going to start with folding our signatures. To fold a folio or to fold your signature, you want to get your pieces of paper. So you want to get them as even as possible and you're going to fold this in half. And when you do, you get your bone folder or whatever you have. And here you have your first signature. You're gonna poke three holes. You can go ahead and mark with your pencil where the holes are going to be. Put the, the template here so you can see the holes out going in. But you can see that I have my template in here going out, going in. So when you do use your awl, you're going to poke going through so it's going outwards. And then we'll do it again here. And we'll do it again here. So we have three holes. One, two, three. And this template will be posted on my website and it will be at www.cloudberry.com and I'll have that template ready for all of you there. Now that we have our signature put together, we want to go ahead and pound it down together on all ends. And you'll notice that no matter how hard you try, you have this. Now I have a guillotine that I can go ahead and cut this and make it nice and perfect squares. But if you don't have a guillotine, this is where your rulers come in handy. And what you wanna do with your rulers is you can either get your box cutters or you get your X-Acto knives. And what you wanna do is go ahead and cut those off. And the secret here is not to go and, and try to do one heavy duty sharp man, man it through type of cut. You want to go ahead and just do a lot of small slices through. And then that should get it all cleaned up. Okay. And then what you have is a nice clean cut. Ah, stuff right there. Ah, in the bottom. All right. So you have that all nice and clean. And then you can cut all this up and have confetti. After that's done, you want to take a look at your decorative paper and you want to see where you want your composition to be. 
do you want the pretty beautiful butterflies or do you want the vase in there and um you know that the vase is going to be on the back of your book and this will be in the front i'm going to probably cut it off on the top and just leave it open and leave this in the back because i would like this complete vase here and the front we can go ahead and like make it decorative what you want to do is look at the size of your book after you make it and you want to make it an eighth of an inch all the way around so your book will fit and what i do usually is flip it over ta-da and um i already marked it so we have about an eighth of an inch now i didn't mark the eighth of an inch because i on the sides because i knew that we were going to cut it we don't want to cut this bottom part down. I just marked it for you so you can see that there's an eighth of an inch marking right here. So we're going to take this again. And this is actually 12 inches. So we're going to take the longer one and we're going to put it over so you can see it. We're going to put this over so we can... I had to make sure that was in a shot. All right. So we can use this for something else. All right. Now we have this. Ah, I got a butterfly in there. That's okay. I'm going to fold this in half. So we'll go ahead and we will Now when I do this, I do not go crazy with my bone folder and the reason why I don't be is because I don't want that to actually break any of the inks or anything in here because of the way that they create these papers. They will, they will crack and kind of go crazy. And if you look right here, you can see how far this is. All right. So we only want a quarter of an inch from here. Or if you're happy with that, if you're happy with that, that's that's fine. That's that's pretty groovy. Ah, ah, got so much stuff going on. I don't know what to do. All right. What I like about these are my magic cutting mats and you can just cut stuff off and everything will be fine. Unless you cut too much off and then you're kind of posed, but you know, you just gotta trust yourself sometimes. Now you have a kind of a good looking pamphlet there. Well, all right. So you could take this and what I do is and you could just line it up here. All right, so now you have your three holes. I actually think I want this on top. I kind of like it. What do you think?
Woo happens. Good thing it comes off, right? All right. The glue happens, and ah, oh boy, did I make it happen. All right, we're going to go ahead and sew this. I'm just gonna go, I have one, I usually do it for how many signatures I have. I have one signature, but technically I have two in there, so I'm just gonna go one, two. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. So what I like to do, since this one, I'm not going to put that much on it. So I'm going to do one quick sew wipe. Okay. Okay. So for this one, we are going to go to the middle of our signatures. So you see I have my my needle through and we're going to put it through the middle and we're going to put it through the middle and we're going to pull it out and we're going to pull it all the way through and we're going to leave a tail. So I don't know if you can see that and you should be keeping your book this way <laughs> so the spine's always facing towards you, okay? when you're sewing. And then you want to put it to the top. So you have your top hole that I glued over. And then you're going to push it all the way through. And then you're going to go across to the next hole all the way down to the bottom. And when you tighten you don't want to tighten this way, you want to tighten away from your signatures, so you want this nice and taut. So you're going to be pulling on this one, and you're going to be tightening. So see how tightened that's getting? Alright. And then you're going to go through the back to the middle hole. And you're going to go all the way through. And what you don't want to do is pierce through. So you're pulling all the way through. And then you want to tighten that. All right. So you're going to go underneath. What I do is I go underneath the original thread. And you want to make sure it's all tight. All right. And then you're going to go under. And you're going to tighten that. Right, and then you're gonna go over. And you're gonna tighten that. Okay. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and cut. With a couple disasters, you have a really simple book. And here's our first book. We want to keep this pressed underneath something so that the book stays flat. Here on our five hole punch, whoops, we have another sheet that I've done. So this was 11 by 17 and I cut the 11 by 17 smaller. And again, this was decorative paper and here I have a template for you that I will have on my website. And what I did was poke the holes through and, and I, you can see that it's one, two, three, four, five. So I made them a little bit bigger so you can see. This again was the same concept that we had before. So I cut the tops and the bottoms off of this part of this one. I thought these would be really cute. Um, we could make them into bookmarks later. 
Um, I thought that I could maybe cut, cut it or cut it in half and maybe do some epoxy over it. I'm not sure. I thought it would be really cute to be a matching set with this. With this type of paper, you also need to be very careful because of how they layered the inks. You don't want to put a bone folder to this because you'll just crack it all the way through. So you just want to gently fold it with your hand. We will put this right in the middle, like that, and then we'll use this as your template. So you're going to put one, two, three, four, five. During the last video session, we noticed that part of the video was cut off. So I decided to cut all the threads and refilm the five hole pamphlet stitch. On this session, I'm going to be using the black linen thread so you can easily see. And I will use a regular book binding needle. And what I have here is two and a half lengths of my book. So there's one, two and a half. And we'll go ahead and get started. You don't need to pre-wax this thread. This is a little bit of a thicker thread, so you may or may not need needle nose pliers to go through. So you want to start in the middle of your book and you're going to go through the middle hole. And you're going to leave a little bit of a tail. And then you're going to go up, one hole up, and then in. Then you're going to go back down and through another hole. Then you're going to go through back down and you want to make sure that you don't puncture your thread. You're going to go back down through your second hole down, which is here. Then you're going to go down to the last hole. Then you're going to go back up from the second hole up. So you can see that everybody has a thread going through. And then you're going to go down, back down to the middle hole. You go back down, making sure that you don't puncture a thread and you're going under the middle thread. So you may need to tighten that up. Okay. What we want to do is it's come here and we want to go underneath the original thread. And we want to go and make a tie on it. We want to leave about a couple inches. And there you have your, 
your five hole. So you have one, two, three, four, and five. Here are the five pamphlets that we did. The wildlife, the butterfly pamphlet. I put a nice little moth in the front of it to hide the little glue mistake that we had with a beautiful vase behind it. We also have the simple pamphlet. And the next time on Bookbinding Mondays, we're going to make a simple leather journal cover um, to protect these three guys. So I hope you join me um, next week on Cloudberry Hollow. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. And you can buy me a coffee so you can help me work on my video skills. Cheers.